Thank you very much indeed. Uh, we are at Royal Sports Club and I'm um, joined by the captain who will define who is a great man and also he's going to share his experience about today's game. So welcome, uh, Bona Captain. Karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you so much. Introduce yourself and tell us how the game was and of course uh, tell us who is a great man. Very good. Uh, thank you, Sana Jeff. Uh, my name is Justin Degua. I'm the current uh, uh, golf captain, Royal Sports Club. Uh, I don't know where to start, but uh, let me start by appreciating Maridadi uh, Motors yeah. for the event that we've had today, uh, Jeff. We hosted more than 230 golfers on to our course today. Uh, yeah, to join in the conversation yeah. of uh, Inua Boy Child. And uh, while at it, let me also answer who I think uh, a great man is. And of course, I've given a quote, yes. so I'll not deviate from uh, my quote. Mm -hmm. I think a great man is a divine gift to his family and society. And of course, in there, there is so much, when you talk of uh, divinity, there is so much, there is responsibility, there is justice, there is uh, fairness, there is hard work. So, no, not one word can describe a uh, great man, Jeff. Okay. Yeah. So can you tell us how was the game? Uh, how did you perform as a captain of this club? Well, good. I had uh, the privilege to play with Eric uh, from Maridad Motors, CEO Maridad Motors, uh, Mark Masharia from Alumni Golf, and uh, they are good friends, and my friend uh, uh, as the fourth ball. So largely, you know, when you play with the sponsor, you, you are careful not to, of course, keep outshining yes, the sponsor. Yes, yes, you can't, you can't outshine so, the master. The master. That, that tells you how I play today. How was the game? Very good. Mm -hmm. For the first time, I have played with a captain of a club and I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> but he said otherwise. He was here, yeah. and he said he was a bit scared. It was a business case. It was a business. He was just trying to play cool because he didn't want you to not to come here again. Anyway, we'll tell us. We'll do a rematch. We'll do a rematch to confirm my win. Yes. Just tell him that. All right. Yeah. So tell us uh, how the game was. The game was good. Okay. Uh, amazing sport. Uh, very great company. I was with the captain of the club. I was with Mark Mashari and a friend of mine called Johnston Kamunde. Yes. So we were a team of four men, and we've had beautiful conversations in the course as you saw at every tea box we had a quote from a man uh, trying to define who a great man is and that is what the conversation was all about and I would say it was very very enlightening for me to listen to other men and get to know how they define great men in their lives okay so uh, what what are the expectations of uh, the golf tournaments that you've been doing uh, this being the second one what are the expectations from you as a man and as a captain of the industry? I think uh, one of the expectations that we, we want to see is that we want to see increased conversations by men around the issue of masculinity. And we are very clear, it's not that we do not want to hear the female voices, we want to hear them and we want to appreciate them, but we do not want our women to remain in an echo chamber where they are discussing men issues and the issue of the boy child. And whereas we know that at the end of the day, if you have a boy at home, uh, even if somebody is a single mother, for example, and we respect single mothers for all the efforts they put to raise up their sons, yes. but we do understand that at one point in the stages of this boy growing up, there will be need for a male role model in the life of that boy. So one of the things that we want to see as an outcome, as a social outcome, is that we want the men to own up the problems, the challenges that we have around the issue of the boy child. If it is the issue of confidence, our boy is lacking confidence, our boy is lacking assertiveness, our boy is lacking a focus and a direction in life, our mm. boy is lacking discipline. We want the older men to understand that it is our responsibility. We are the fathers of today. There are no other fathers that will come from the moon or from Mars to mentor the boys who are in the age, you know, the young boys today. It is you, Jeff, it is me, Eric, the guys in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s, in their 60s, for us to go the extra mile and say, number one, if you have a son in your house, you're going to be an active father. If you have boys that are calling you and co, or they are calling you grandpa, just take an extra attention on them, put an eye on them, have conversations with them, and be able to guide them and mentor them and coach them for the future. Oh yes, thank you very much indeed. I am joined by another friend of the boy child, another friend to Eric Mwangi, and we want him to share with us the experience, this being the second uh, edition of Inua Boy Child. Kindly introduce yourself and tell us how the game was. Thank you, Jeff. My name is Johnston Kamunde. Uh, 
a very old friend of uh, uh, Maridadi Motors, Eric, the the lead in the in the in, in the in the company and uh, in the Inua Child Initiative, and uh, and also the friends of Inua Child Inua Boy Child Initiative. Mm. Today we were here at Roiro, uh, taking another tour of uh, swinging. I am not very sure why we come to swing every other day, but I think it is very refreshing when you are out there, yes. particularly when you are in the bunkers and in the trees. Yes. Uh, today, number eight was not very easy for me. Okay. I dropped a ball there. Yes. And it was not very encouraging. But uh, <laughs> again, those are the challenges of boy child. Yes. So you must always remember, when you get into the deep, there is always an opportunity to go out. And once you get out there, it is as refreshing as those who did not go inside. Yes. So failures are part of the journey. Get in, get out, fall down, rise up. Yes. And proceed. Take your journey. So I want you to define a great man according to your understanding. According to my understanding, a great man. So a great man is a man who is ready to be more accountable than he is responsible for. Mm -hmm. You must always more accountable than for, his... more accountable for than you are responsible for. Okay, this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. At any given time in your life, you will be responsible for something. Yes, and that is the in the, the, the boundaries of your functionality. Yes, say for example, Jeff, you have a family. Your family is your responsibility, and therefore. When we ask you, what is your first accountability? You'll tell me, my family. But now, I want a Jeff who is able to be accountable for more than his family. Okay. Come back to the Inua Child Initiative. Yes. I want a Jeff who believes that the son out there, he is more accountable for the son out there than he is responsible for his own son. What does that mean? When you see a boy child there, who needs your help? You are able to bring him up to the level of your son or to even a greater level and then you bring all of them to a higher level that is a great man yes we've been talking about uh, empowering a boy child inua boy child so i'm joined by eric's son and he's here he will tell us according to you first of all introduce yourself so my name is elvis ngigi mwangi the son of Eric Mwangi Ngigi, who is the CEO of Maridadi Motors. Yes. And to me, I think a great man is Muhammad Gaddafi. Muhammad Gaddafi. Uh, Why? Why Muhammad Gaddafi? Muhammad Gaddafi is just a different man. He was able to fight mm -hmm. for Africa at large. He wanted to create African, the, new, the United States of Africa. Yes, USA. And I think that he was able to unite every single country and Zim as putting one of the greatest men. Yeah. So would you describe your father Eric Mwangi as a great man? What has, Very much. What has he done so that you come to that conclusion? My dad is a very great man. Mm. First of all, he created this Maridadi Motors when there were a lot of challenges. Actually, he had to take a risk and borrow a loan to create it. Yes. And you know, if the business didn't succeed, the, he wouldn't be able to pay back the loan yes. in an imprison time. Yes. But because he believed in God and had faith, he was able to create this business. That makes him a great man for his courage. All right. What are you doing? What are you Elvis Moigua Gatohi. Eh? Who met him on the road? He met him on Aldo Berry. Eh? Who did you call him? I called him on the Yes. That we really would like to see when I come better. She can. I can. I see. She did. Temedo. She can. I see. Golf. We really see. Oh, na ne ne ni gimo no. Eh. That we do. We na we do. Eh. Eh. No, that go taja ta ida to go kana igiri. Eh. Eh. Moakoyo. Eh. Moakoyo. Moakoyo ne ji date transoya open. Mhm. Mm na T field. Yes. Kakamega. Mhm. Mm na Kenya junior match play. Eh. Eh. Tatuero da wai gire deni wa odaki wa golf we tamuigua. Okay, ni da gire da biri golfu Korea Dubai. Ka da biri ni foundation ni kora goku Dubai. Ah, tu tiri na go tu juniors to Dubai ni kiharoki amufira. Na 
gofu mm. uda hura wa mufira mm. uge tokyo yo turi adu siste ni foundation yo mm -hmm. tuge train no tukire o hamwe hey. le utukiro le uneto abiriye uda ka gofu le uho neho da abiriye foundation yine yo hey. na de wa umu wa o product yo bado da isi no irana ge hey. hey. ni ku ni ku da abiriye yani ku da ku turi ati wa hura ga gofu Eh. Wa horaga mufira football eh. no kihota gukoro ugitrainwo guthaka golf no kimenya eh na mm -hmm. kimenya golf eh mm -hmm. eh tatwire hi mudu angenda kumenya guthaka golf wega ni maundu mari kubataraga golf eh golf no ngenda kumenya ndi golf ne dito na ne huthu eh eh ore kurigana ore kumekuwera eh no ni practice no go practice no go practice practice yes. makes perfect odiete odiete konako na golf ino yaku golf ino ni ne dogame ile forori mwaka ine mwaka mu hituku wa kore Egypt mm -hmm. or Africa Junior Championship yes ma hotire kindu ku asa to kire yo ni team wa to kire na baitha tu okay eh mm -hmm. mwaka ni representative the national team ya Kenya mm -hmm. region 4 eh kore Ethiopia mm -hmm. to to yo kire yo yo hotani eh kuwe okay yeah very good ocho na ke ni mudu etagwo muigwa ni muthaki wa golf athomeire kana hi efudithirie maundu megi kuhura golf kura go gwitwa dumberi stadium na dumberi stadium adu ara moe gikora go gikiharo kya mufira agathi ugwa ke graduate ga pole pole na gatwika ati ni ari koragu agithakira bururi ntoisho ke gatho ni tondu wa onyitaneri waku na idwe na muigwa haha ni gweda tugushokire gatho thank you very much we are at rero sports club and i'm um, joined by a gentleman we want to know how the experience was and we also want to know who is a great man according to him welcome and introduce yourself your name and tell us how is the experience and who is a great man thank you very much uh, my name is ben okumu i'm a member of rural sports club and um, my experience today was uh, very interesting i liked the reception i liked the handling i was uh, handled properly by maridadi motors and then uh, i was even offered a free ball uh, and um, the challenge was quite good especially in hole number three where i was expecting to do a hole in one i missed by one foot yeah but i thank god that uh, uh, they, they offered to even bring a vehicle around uh, generally um, uh, the course was good, the experience was good, and I believe um, uh, I did my best. Okay. Waiting for the results in, later in the day. All right. So according to you, who is a great man or describe a great man? A great man in this current dispensation is that man who is taking care of other men, who works with other men, shares with other men, and uh, respects all men. Thank you very much. You've had it. Thank you've you. heard about a great man see you around see you in the evening congratulations and you wish much. you all the best thank you very much very best asante my name is mark masharia and uh, i'm part of this initiative and uh, we've partnered with marie daddy to make this an awesome impactful event so why are we doing this and why am i here playing for inua boy child initiative is because one is we found there is an opportunity for us to impact the future generation. And how do we do that? It's by being there to provide mentorship, to provide uh, brotherhood to these young men so that they can be able to be encouraged. We've had a lot of um, um, a young men when they get to the age of teens, they're already starting to think life is not already worthwhile. And you hear a lot of mental issues that are happening. But we are here basically to, uh, into this course so that we can encourage the young men to know that there is still a future for them, that there is still something that they, they can live for. Um, gone are the days when uh, you would be just be, you would be just be waited on or you'd be measured by your success, by how much you have in your pocket. But these are the days where you can impact a life, no matter in what cadre of life you are in, no matter in what level of life you're in. So we are here just to encourage the young boys to be able to be uh, impactful, to be able to know, to, to, to know that they have an opportunity to be the next uh, leaders of today and of tomorrow. So a question, mm -hmm. have you ever received an advice from a fellow man mm -hmm. that really helped you? And if yes, what was that advice? Great. Um, there is a one point when I used to grow up, and I used to grow up in the suburbs uh, of Nairobi. 
And uh, a lot of times when I was growing up, I would see uh, people driving fancy cars. I would see people living in good houses. And I would always look back and say, what should I do to be them? It's until I got to a point where I realized that, um, that what matters as much is to leave a worthwhile legacy. So it's one thing to actually amass all these things, but it's another also to leave uh, the future already um, a future for the young people and a future for the next generation. One of the most encouraging things is to be able to see that your lifestyle and how you live, either by advising and by encouraging others, you're able to become a role model to young men, you're able to be a role, a role model to other uh, young, young children who are able to see that it takes uh, a man who knows what they want in life so that they can live a worthwhile legacy. So I'm a believer in leaving a legacy because I know the next generation, the much they want to be reading about you is for what you have been able to do, not what you just left, but what you have done for them in their generation. In three words, just tell a young man three words. Just three words to encourage three him. Words. Three words. The first one is, do not leave this world until you're known for something. The one thing you should do is to put in as much as you can into one area so that people can speak of your name in days to come. Just live your life and do not live until you're known for one thing. Right now we are seeing young men driven by uh, influence. They want to rush for things. Some of them are going to be kept with, I don't want to say, <laughs> they're older women. What can you say about that? I think the most encouraging thing I would say is everything takes time. Just like a seed, we do not put in a seed on the soil and you expect it the following day to see it come up. It takes time so that it can be able to grow farm roots under the ground. So I would encourage young people to know that it takes time. Everything takes time. And that time and patience will be able to give you a worthwhile legacy. I usually say this, that things that take time to be, they're the ones that last longer. Great, so today on the 28th of October, uh, I'm here playing for this initiative, the Inua Boy Child Initiative by Marie Daddy. And the, the theme of this uh, initiative is who is a great man? And for me, what I understand a great man is, a great man is one who leaves a worthwhile legacy. Someone when they sit back, they will look back at their life and say, I have done something that can impact the next generation. All that is required, not to leave anything to do with just property, but is to leave a, a generation that will be able to remember that Mark passed on this, uh, this, these paths and he was able to leave a big and uh, worthwhile legacy. So I, I am a great um, believer that worthwhile legacy is what matters as much to young men and also to old men, that that is what the ultimate goal is, to live a life with purpose and to live a life that will be able to impact the next generation. Hi guys, my name is Eric, the founder of CEO Maridani Motors. Very excited about this golf tournament today, uh, dubbed Inua Boy Child by Maridani Motors. And this is a golf tournament that drives conversations around positive masculinity. We did the first game uh, in the month of August from Kembu Golf Club. We are doing today at uh, Roido Golf Club, which is bigger and better. And today we have a theme and our theme is who is a great man and it will be a very interesting day to play the sport of golf as we get to see what people think and how they define great men in their lives. Thank you so much. Let's have a great day. According to you Eric, who is a great man? According to me, a great man is the one who is a servant leader. He seeks to empower the people around him. He takes care of his family. He is patriotic enough to try to uh, build his country and to build the communities around him. And whenever, when you started the conversation, how is the perception out there? Are people responding to the conversation? What are people viewing and what do you think we can do better so that we can reach more people? People are very interested uh, in this conversation of empowering the boy child. Uh, of course, there has been a great need to increase male voices around the conversation. Previously, we've had great women in the society uh, talking about empowering the boy child. We want to encourage them to continue. We want to join hands with them. But we want to hear more of the male voices talking about empowering the boy child because when it comes to empowering the boy child, it is the men that have to be the mentors of the boys in the society. And in the golf course, we meet a lot of men and we encourage them to be great fathers, great uncles, great grandfathers, great brothers, 
Let the men watch out for each other out there in the families, in the companies, in the organizations, and even in the community. If right now you went back in time and you are 20 years old, what advice would you give yourself? As I, would, I would tell myself to be more confident, to risk more, uh, to implement the ideas that come to my mind because ideas are normally dropped into our heads by God but sometimes we are afraid of taking the risk, we are afraid of failure. I would tell my 20 year old self, do more, try more, serve more, help more people, do not fear to try. So, and I want you to tell uh, one word to these young men who, like us, like me, who want to achieve so big and great goals when we are so young and we don't trust the process. What can you tell them? I would tell them that to live one day at a time and to always look at the next step and to do that which they are able to do today. I mean, forget about farming 10 acres of land if you don't have them. If what you have is 50 by 100, start by doing your farming on that 50 by 100. You're going to learn a lot of lessons from that 50 by 100 that you can apply in farming your one acre farm tomorrow. So do not say that you want to be big if you're not willing to take the small steps that you can be able to take today. Finally, what is the biggest challenge facing men? Like, what is the biggest challenge that you've seen so that you can start this initiative, Boy Inua Boy Child Golf Tour? I think we need men to be more vocal, to believe in themselves. We need them to be more authentic. If you're having a problem, just admit you're having a problem. Seek help. Talk to your older brother, your older sister. Talk to your uncle. Talk to your mom. Talk to your dad. Do not be the kind of a man who sits in a corner and you're, you're just about to implode through a depression. What I would tell the men is we need to have conversations. We need to support each other morally, emotionally, and even psychologically. And we need to stop being lone rangers. And this is why it is a beautiful thing for us to come to the golf course today, interact as men, interact with women, and exchange ideas on what it really means to be a great man. Gabriel Mothwale, Gabriel Mothwale, please come forward. Let us give him a round of applause. Gabriel Mothwale. We also have J.M. Wangi, J.M. Wangi, J.M. Wangi is here with us. Let us appreciate J.M. Wangi as he comes at the front. Uh, Gabriel, please take the center stage. J.M. Mwangi, akopandegani, akwapi, tuwapigia makofi mazuri tafadhali. Thank you. I will be joined by Jeffrey Masharia, Finsko. Jeffrey Masharia, Jeffrey Masharia, appreciate him tafadhali na makofi mazuri. We have Joe Mwangi. Joe Mwangi is here with us. Joe Mwangi. Let us appreciate John Mwangi na makofi mazuri tafadhali. Tupige makofi mazuri tafadhali. And then we have James Miner. James Miner from Maridadi. James Miner. Okay, let us okay, let us appreciate him as he comes. We have Alvin Domo from Mar, uh, from Haiso. Alvin Domo is coming. Please come. And then now we'll have Sire Kumwa. You are supposed to be on this plan. Yes, you are. So we have one person. We will. We will. Don't you worry. So I think uh, if I can get an extra microphone, I will be glad. So you introduce yourself and what you do. And of course, you give us the definition of a great man. Anzi uh, Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, as you've heard, my name is James Maina Muthi. I manage my daddy motor Sako. Kadibuni Sara to the Sako. Tukupamoja. Thank you very much, Asante. 
Yeah, good evening, everyone. Yeah, my name is Joe Mwangi, and um, I'm a motivational speaker. I'm also a writer of uh, a number of books. I'm a mentor, and I'm also uh, doing consultancy in organizations. Good evening, everyone. Let's you think I'm so old I can't stand. <laughs> My name is Gabriel Mpoale, a trustee of Real Sports Club. And I was ambushed by the captain. So when I refused to, anyway, I will say this again later. Thanks. <laughs> Good evening everyone, my name is uh, Kibe Mwangi, and I have uh, J.M. Mwangi, I am a public uh, servant, I am a gopher, I am a father, and above all, I love golf. Thank you. Um, the chair. Captain and Rural Golf Club members and other stakeholders. Good evening. Uh, my name is Geoffrey Mosharia from Finsco Africa. Um, under the projects department, uh, we are we are also glad to be here today and uh, sponsoring a very occasious moment like this. Uh, yeah, thank you. So let us appreciate uh, the panel. To appreciate my coffee, Mazuri. Them. So we would like to hear later on from the panel their description of a great man. Mary Daddy Motors was started by Eric Mwangi who is very passionate about the boy child and for so many years we've been having this conversation that we have empowered our girl child is it too much is it so much and uh, now it's time to talk about the boy child so I've, I've been challenged that i only have men at the front but i'll ask maybe one question each table in a minute uh, you can tell us or you can give us a definition of a great man so maybe starting from the back there we can get one person to volunteer a lady and tell us the definition of a great man and maybe i'll go around um i can go around and i would like to hear from the ladies what is the definition of a great man according to you please tell us okay good morning everyone my name is stella um, i'm a gopher here and a member here I think the definition would be very subjective depending on your past experiences, especially when growing up, who was your father? Who was your father figure? When you're having socialization and then for us who are married, what is your husband like? And um, what is your ideal? So I don't want to be thrown out of the house, my husband is here. <laughs> but for me, I would say an ideal man is someone who is responsible, who is, um, has emotional and social intelligence. And for me, being in a mental health space and being a mental health expert, a man who is able to accept and be able to validate someone else's feelings and also accept to say that I'm overwhelmed and accept how they are feeling. So I think for me that is in a nutshell what I would call and I not really an ideal man, but for me, the, the bits and pieces is what makes up a man. Let us appreciate her. You have some more. You wanted to say something else? Okay, thank you very much. Um, tell us, according to you, who is a great man? Is uh, the person seated next to you? 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Esther Naima Safaris. Uh, from my perspective, an ideal man is uh, a person who um, generations, okay, who, what would I say? Um, the visions of who helps others achieve their vision, be it be their children or their, the people in their circle and their families. So let us appreciate the ladies Tafadali. Let us appreciate the ladies Makofi Mazuri. What was Senali? We know you have won five nil. Let us appreciate what was Senali Pia. What were chance to my people two nil to appreciate by the way? Manchester United, tomorrow is your day. So who is uh, give us a definition of a great man? It's my fellow journalist. Welcome. Thank you. Greetings everybody. My name is Julia Majale, Managing Director at Uko Media. Uh, the definition of a great man for me is a man who understands, someone who understands the role that, that they play in a society, and especially the fact that they have to leave a legacy, leave a legacy behind. So if you understand that role as a man, and you know the role that you need to play in terms of raising your children, the role that you play in your home as a family and the entire society, for me that's a great man. So that's uh, from a journalist perspective. So did you discuss who will tell us who a great man is? Right, there you go. Who is a great man according to you? Is it your father? Is it your brother? Is it your husband? Hi everyone. My name is Leah. Um, I would say a great man in the society is someone who has a lot of influence and impact due to his natural attributes, like uh, if you're a hero and how you take on the society. For me, that is a great man. He's a great man. Let us appreciate her. So, ah, very good. Well done. There you go. Who is a great man? Mami. My name is Anne Gumba. Uh, I'm a gopher here. To me, a great man is that man who is very responsible uh, with the things that he does and uh, who knows the need of the society. And that man who is able to even to take care of the family and to, to take it to another level. Um, to me, a great man is that man who understands the need of other people, including myself. So let us appreciate this table, Tafarali. So, so I have uh, that table, that table, that table. I have about four tables. I'm coming back to you. So let us appreciate all the ladies who have spoken. And we continue with our conversation. Uh, we have one gentleman from High so Please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Good evening, everyone. I'm probably the youngest here. Yes. My name is Alvin Dongo. I'm a real estate agent from High Soul Properties. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will go straight to that question. So, a great man should also mentor others. So, uh, at what point should a man be mentored? Bona Gabriel, at what point should a man be mentored? I'm starting with you because you told me, umeishi, umeishi kidogo na umeona mengi. Let me give you this one. You're asking me a difficult one. Definitely, a great man will not go to my good friend here, the moderator, and tell them, I want to mentor you because of their reputation, because of their known dependability, their, their known, oh, their charisma for that matter. People will go to them for advice. But I also wanted to add, 
That means you cannot lock yourself in your room and declare yourself a great man. You will have to be declared by people because of your actions and the way you interact with them for positive growth, not negative for that matter. Can I leave it there for now? That's okay. Uh, your question is, um, at what point should a man be mentored? Uh, very good. I think that's a very good question. Uh, at what point should a man be mentored? I think a man should be mentored right from when he is born. Because who is a great man? A great man is the end result or the product you get after raising a boy in a great way. Because there is no way you raise a boy in the wrong way and then wait for a great man on the end. And that's the miracle that will not happen. You will not raise a boy in a wrong way and wait for a great man. So once you go to the hospital and you confirm it's a boy, the business begins there. Because it's the dream of every African father to have a son for continuity. But the job of making the son into a man is where we draw the line. So right from the hospital. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, I agree with Joe. But I think I'll a song up on Kidoko. For me, it starts even before this boy is born. The moment you understand and realize it's a boy that you're bringing up, that relationship that you normally form with the, the baby, well, they are still in the womb. And I agree, I know majority of people agree with me. There's that bond. Jeff, when you are talking to that boy, when he's a mother's womb, there's that relationship that you normally create. And it normally starts from there. The mentoring should start from there. And as you say, where's the picker? Marenge, we expect to marry at the end of the day. So you must start from before the boy comes. And then immediately the boy comes to walk this journey with this boy. All the way so that you can be able to get that result that you call a great man. Yeah. There's this medal that goes that of uh, Samaki Mkunje Angali Mbichi. You know, it's very, very underrated. But it's what, through the, the process, it was Yondo in a letter, a boy into a great man. I would say, the process of transforming a great boy into a great man, it's not just the responsibility of the parents, but it's the responsibility of the society as well. The same same way that the girl child is empowered right from the beginning, it should transition to this young man all the way to adulthood. Yes, thank you. Thank you, let us appreciate. Um, how do we bring up one? Uh, I would go back to the ancient times, uh, both uh, the European side and also in Africa. Um, back then, if you remember very well, I'm not that old, but wise words were passed on over generations and a way to bring up the ideal a uh, great man is to ensure one, this person is fully knowledgeable of what has happened in the past and also ensure that that small boy is able to handle what is happening in the present and the boy is ready for what is, happen is going to come in future. Meaning this has to be an innovator or a creator in some way You've given him grounds to one, Aumie understand this is what the world is, not to cover for the kid. Sababu ni mtoto, akose ku understand that in future the, 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 the platform that we have given them, uh, one day it will be off and it is him to create a platform for himself and also for others. So it is a, a way to create leaders, innovators, or create a, um, 
solution finders, but to find the inner them to do so. Yeah. A round of applause to our panelists. Thank you. I will uh, say this. When you want to mentor a boy child, and you, you want to do it so that you can have a great man, it should not be a one-off event. It should be something continuous, and I would emphasize on doing it by experience and by demonstration. And I think as parents, as fathers, we have a responsibility so that we can be able to demonstrate. It's not about just saying, this is what I want, this is what you should do, but when you have the presence of the father to the boy, then the boy will be able to watch and will be able to see what to copy from the father. Thank you. So someone uh, mentioned about responsibility. A great man is a responsible person. So currently, we have a generation of people who are not responsible. How did we get here as men? Did it happen today? Did it happen yesterday? It's something that has been ongoing. Where did we lost it as a society and especially the men? I'll start with you going that way. How, how, yes, you start with you. That's a hard question, but I think I can try and uh, answer it. I think it has been uh, a generational issue. And one of the problems I always attribute it to, it, it, it's, it can actually be called a historical injustice. The boys, especially when uh, the fathers are absent because they have assumed very serious responsibilities, looking for money, so the boys have been left at home and they have been neglected. So at what point then did we have time to demonstrate to them what we expected them to become when they grow up? I remember one time I went to a school and I asked uh, a teacher, who taught me how to become a parent? Because my parents were busy, they were not there to show me who, how to become a parent. But here I am, I am a parent and I have a child. How do I become a respectable, effective parent. So I think uh, in my answer to your question, it has been a generational issue and it is good that now we are realizing there is a problem. So how do we address it? Because we need to arrest it at some point so that we stop condemning this boy child who has gone wayward so that we can now be able to bring them. But as we try to bring them back, there are those that are still young who we can try to save from drifting to that problem. Thank you. A round of applause. So I encourage your fellow members to clap for the panelists at Tafadari. Uh, uh, I believe the whole problem started when we have a complete disconnect between the parents and the kids. So we no longer, we only give instructions, we do not mentor them. So anajua anafanya kitu flani, but hajui kwa nini anafanya kitu flani. So us as the parents, especially the fathers, we only give commands, but we don't take time to explain to them exactly why we are instilling that kind of discipline to them. So you find the boy at one point will become a um, rock, will try to get the attention. If not getting the attention from the father, will start getting the attention of others and getting ideas from others. And then from there, uh, that is a completely different boy and 
getting that person to actually come back and get something as a foundation becomes very hard. So I would start by saying it is the role of the father in the house that should be very st strong, especially when it comes to wisdom passing down to the kids and also uh, shaping the, that boy to a man. Yep. A round of applause. A round of applause. Thank you. Gabriel, question is how did we get here? Let me tell you a story. Uh, I don't know what happens in high school now, but when we were in high school, we knew the people who are smokers. And we actually, some of us prayed never to smoke or to misbehave. Now, coming down to the boy raising a boy child, I think it is necessary to maintain continuous contact all the time with your boy child, both parents, and to ensure that you develop friendship with them so that you can discuss any topic, any topic, including when they are ready for marriage, how to become good parents. This does not really happen because when you are in the cities, in the evenings, you are sitting in front of a TV set, you are not discussing anything. And I'd like to just give an example of a colleague of mine. I am a retired uh, teacher. So this colleague of mine from Canada was married and they had one son. And they did not have a TV set in their home. Just imagine, you are not spending the time out in a pub, but you are in the house with your wife and son. Tell me how you failed to bond and be able to discuss topics that otherwise boys don't end up discussing with their fathers. So you must maintain continuous contact, continuous parenting, and setting good examples that a boy can emulate. And you are proud, that it will be proud to copy you. Occasionally, I'm sure the parents here will tell you, when they are seated somewhere, they will also see their sons behave like them. They sit somewhere at the corner. If you are hiding somewhere, probably when we, if your father is watching you, they will see you, they will see them, you behaving like them. Because you copy from them. Let us not underrate them. You actually learn something from your father. And, and or even your mother too. Because they teach you how to be men, not to be sissies. So, but they also teach girls how to be girls. I have a father of three daughters and one son. But I did not teach my son how to climb on top of uh, wardrobes. Yet one day I came and find, found him on top. I don't know whether he's great or something. And the girls are polite and whatever. But he still managed to grow like, I think like a man. He's now a father of two. Yes. And raising his own family. So um, I hope he learned something from me. So what I'm saying basically is let us be there for our children whether we are mothers or whether we are fathers. We know, we know we are busy looking for money, how to work, uh, we are out working and we are allowing house girls and housemaids to raise, or, or housemaids to raise our children, but let us make sure we set aside some days or days in the week to be with our children in the absence of somebody else. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Gabriel. So we are winding up, don't worry. We are winding up, don't worry. Yeah, um, to respond to that question, uh, Jeff, you were asking, how did we get here? And the question is, where are we? Uh, so we are in a place where we have got boys that no longer have got the desire to fight. Kitambo, ungiabia de, ungiabia chari, 
wakiwa let's say ni form 2 then na boy uambie boy si stako atakushinda huyo boy atasoma the whole night lakini sasa hii ukiambia ati boy si stako atakushinda anasema kwani that wish to win is going down because of the suppression of testosterone hormone in boys it's going away because of the way you are living and so this boy is no longer that tough guy that we had long time ago when boys were natural like fighters uh this gentleman talked about distance and i want to mention three things number one is that error increases with the distance error increases with the distance even if you are the best footballer in the world the further you go away from the goal post the more likely you're going to miss the score so the further you are away from your son the more likely you will miss the score that is distance number two is role modeling a case scenario in embakasi kijana wa form 2 akafukuzwa sababu alikuwa amenyoa moho akaambua kuja na mzazi mzazi alikuja baba na moho kumrefu kuliko ya mtoto wakashindwa wapige baba and so if we must talk about boys become great men then we must talk about our parenting method are we in agreement so the the, the ball is in our court today that we got to do this together we must role model for them we must parent deliberately and we must do whatever it is to create presence for our children let's not exchange presence with the presence thank you man ke si man ke to appreciate him uh, uh, thank you jeff uh, for me uh, the question would have uh, different uh, responses different answers i'll just pick one uh, it has been said here that uh, the problem that we have at the moment with the boys is a historical issue and i'll pick it from when nzungu came and then uh, we had our fathers our forefathers our dads going to the bush and i'm picking this from the um, I, around me to pick the kikuyus because we are the majority here so when the fathers went to the bush wakiwa maumau to fight for this nation the women were raped in the villages and they were rounded up by the mzungu what happened the mothers realized that they could live on their own without the men and so they raised up these boys on their own so when the mzes were coming from the bush with their rastas they met grown up men like jeff with the beards and these boys never understood the abu elewa we muzeni nani and they were like who are you we've been here we've been feeding we've been growing and we are the way we are today so i uh, i I'm, i'm picking it up from there it's something that we are growing with started uh, from then uh the man was roasted at some point remember we've said that he was in the forest fighting for the uh, for the for the independence and when he came the women were already empowered and that empowerment has continued and it's a good thing for the empowerment of the women uh but again uh something was there was a gap that was created and that that gap has been growing all along and at some point again the church came i'm not against the church but again again the mix of the church was like you could only go to school if you are you are following the bible and again majority of these boys were not connected to the church so they were also again lost at some point they never went to school and here we are now we have the the, the, the story of the single mother not against the single mothers but it's something that we've been growing since then and as you can see as joy is saying where are we now we are having very responsible young men they are growing and that drive even okay let me pick i'm not very old but i know i could go i could walk kilometers to go to look for a girl but today even in the world of technology the boys are just crazy akikataliwa mara moja abiwe no they don't have the drive ya kusema naweza uliza tena kesho we are just there they relax and then everything <laughs> dies from there ah i think round of applause as well hello so for me i think it's the assumption that the boy child is okay and he does not need any mentorship the young man anavigate njia yake hadi ajipate pale you know the society has put so much expectation to the young man 
and yet 9 out of 10, the society does, not, does completely nothing towards this young man. They expect this young man to grow the way he is or the way the society wants the young man to be in exchange of nothing. You see, the fact that we don't have fathers around and it goes on from one generation to another, but it's not just the young man or the father of the young man who's absent. It's the society in general. You see, I'm shocked today to find out that we have something of called Inua Boy Child. I only thought it's the Inua Dada. I only thought that. And if today you go and research the number of NGOs that empower the young man, you'll be shocked with the numbers of the boys, the one that empowers the boys and the ones that empower the girl child. You see, the society has completely shifted the priorities to the young lady and not to the young man. You see, just recently, there was this great issue that uh, Senator Gloria brought to the Senate. It was about the free periods, you see, and it caused a huge frenzy, you see? And that was so good. They were trying to show that this young lady cannot succeed because of one, two, and three, and this one, two, and three really challenges the young lady to find success in the end because something like periods uh, when a young girl experience something like that you see most of them they don't have going to school something like that but to the young man if something like that is shifted to the young man the attention is not there you see the attention is no longer to the young man it has completely shifted to the the young ladies and in turn the society becomes like that we no longer have the drive to go and look for one to three because we know we see the ladies doing it and if they are okay as a society we are okay and uh, i think that's the problem that we are currently having thank you thank you very much a round of applause so i have a question as we come into conclusion you say that uh, the society is expecting so much from you so they should expect that from who? They should expect that from who? Is it to the man? Is it to the girl? Because girls are doing way better than men. Mm. So you are telling me, mm. Ati, the society is looking up to you. There is so much expectation from you and you're not able to get to that threshold. So if they don't expect from you, who do you expect? They expect from now the society has put so much expectation to the young man but in return you know there is no so much support to that you see before I'll go back to the pre mau days where the young man they would sit with the father and they will sit with the grandfather they will mentor this young man from a young man to a great man you see the power would successfully transition. You see the same same expectations are to the same same young man, but in return, there is no that mentorship. So you are telling us yes. that the society has given this young man nothing, but it expects him to give him a lot. Yes. That's what you are saying? Yes. Okay? Yes. Good. Anyone else with a different opinion? Joe? I, I do not have a uh, much different opinion yes but uh, I would like to echo something this gentleman said eh? yeah. about the disconnect between the father and the son and the mother now being the one raising this boy to become a man I think apo kuna mwanya ilileta kitu kinaitwa feminization hypnosis ama demasculinizing the man or a feminized man or boys with the gully tendencies what, what we, boys wakona umama ni karibu ni sema umama yani ni boy lakini yakona behavior za uchiki yani yes and that's a big challenge because, because the father is not present so he will he will definitely pick the yes. behaviors from the mother from the mother yes that is what we call feminization hypnosis okay na hiyo ndio sasa ninataka kusema wa baba wajaribu kukuwa more present okay because that is exactly how the power will be transferred gabriel do you have something to say 
as we conclude. We'll give each a, a minute, a minute, then we finish. Not really, except that um, there is need to cultivate that positive relationship with your children, with your boy child, early enough, before they get into what used to be called the age of turmoil. The teenagers are in an age of turmoil, and before they decide to keep quiet and look at you when you are requesting them to do something, I'm sure the fathers here know, even when the girls decide to rebel against their mothers, you really must have reached out to them positively uh, in a good way so that you are able to advise them later in life. Do not expect to get a lot of cooperation from them when they have already grown up and adopted certain ways influenced by their peer groups. Thank you. All right. Jay. Thank you, Jeff. I will say this, and I will still go back to the fathers being present. And I will quote uh, something that is normally put uh, during trainings. And they say, tell me, and I forget. Teach me, and I may remember. But involve me, and I learn. So it is about involving the boy child in the father's activities so that they are able to pick what the fathers are doing and they can learn those positive things that the father are doing so that we can influence them in a positive way. Thank you. Right. Thank you. To conclude. Um, I still go back to the father and I'll give an example. Um, the men in the house. Hi. The men um, in the house. If right now I, I spot one, and assuming that one man is an Arsenal fan, that Arsenal fan can easily describe what the goalkeeper was wearing today, what was the lineup, what is expected scores will give you a whole analysis of the team. The same, if you ask a man today something to do with the career, like me in real estate, I will tell you everything. The law that governs the land, what, what you expect from land, but if you ask me what colors or what does my boy like, see to me, no, no. We, we, have, we, we have created interest away from home and we have forgotten that our core values, our core responsibility is at home. So I still tell the men in the house and everywhere, we need to go back home where we are needed most. We need to be in a place whereby if you are given uh, the opportunity to talk about your boy because you have instilled everything in that boy, you can easily describe who your son is right now, we completely failed, right so let us appreciate the panel Namakofi Mazuri